Hey friend, today I'm gonna to share with you something that can help your website stand out in the Google search results and drive more traffic to your site as a result. We're gonna be talking about something called schema.org. Now, don't let the name scare you, it's actually not that complicated. Schema.org was an initiative launched in 2011 by the top search engines at the time. So Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Yahoo? Yahoo? Yahoo. In layman's terms, schema.org markup is simply code that you put on your web page that identifies different parts of the page and provides additional context about things like your business or even the author of the page. Now, this was super important for search engines back in 2011 because they didn't have the technology to really understand what the different parts of your pages were. So an example of this could be something like your logo. Let's say your logo exists on the top left of every single page of your website and you wanted to share with search engines that that was your logo. Now what you could do is in the code of your website, you could essentially tag that logo image to indicate to search engines that that was in fact your logo. It's only visible to people that are looking at your HTML code and search engines. So the question is, why would you take the time to add this to your website's code if no one's gonna see it except for search engines? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Over the past decade plus, search engines like Google and search engines like Bing, if they can actually understand what the different parts of your web page are, many times they'll make the information that they now understand look really sweet in the Google search results. Let's say that you're an e-commerce website and you sell thousands of products. If you actually took the time to add schema.org markup or structured data to your web page, and Google is now able to understand that yes, this is a product, sometimes they'll do things like have your product image appear in the search results, have your price appear next to your organic listing, show your availability, show things related to shipping. In this example, your competition in the search results might just have a simple title tag and meta description, but your listing might have that and so much more. And when you can take up more space in the Google search results, the chances that you'll be able to get a click through to your website go up. So in other words, schema.org markup does not magically help you rank higher, but what it can help you do is take advantage of any of these special features that Google puts in the search results because they're now accurately able to see everything that's on your page. So if you wanna drive more clicks to your website and you don't wanna to have to learn a whole new coding language, keep watching because right now I'm gonna share with you how you can add schema.org markup, successful schema.org markup to your website with literally zero HTML coding experience. All right, so without further ado, let's hop into the screen share. Okay, so this is the main website for schema.org. And so if you wanna learn more about the history of schema.org, or if you just wanna learn what it's all about, what its true purpose is, you can go to just schema.org. It's that simple. But once you're on this website, you'll see these options up here. If you select schemas, you can actually start to see what are those high level schemas that you could potentially add to your website to give search engines like Google and Bing more context about what the different parts of your page are, okay? So here you'll see some of the top ones include creative works, embedded non-text objects, event, health and medical types, organization, person, place, local business, etc. Now, if you start clicking into these, I just did a Google search to find out how many schemas actually exist. It's close to 800. So there's a lot of them, right? And so if you're just a small business or a medium-sized business and you wanna be able to take advantage of this, you might be thinking to yourself, which one should I choose? What one's actually impactful? What should I actually do? And so we'll answer that question very simply here in a minute. But before we do that, let me show you what schema.org markup actually looks like when you're looking at the source code of your website. Now that might be a little bit technical, but when you're in an internet browser, you can actually view the source or view the HTML code of the page. And so Google has this example of what it would look like if you wanted to add a basic recipe, okay? And so on this page, you've got the page title tag, but then you start getting into the structured data here, where you can see the type of structured data, it's a recipe, the name is party coffee cake, the name of the author, Mary Stone, and you can see there's just a lot of formatting to get it correct 
for schema.org. Now, once you have it on your website, there are testing tools to see if you did it correctly. So Google has a rich results test and there's also a schema markup validator. And so you can know in real time whether or not you actually added it to your website correctly. Okay, so let's take a step back. All right, you're bought in. You wanna add schema.org markup to your page, but you don't know what schema.org markup to add and you have no HTML coding experience. I've got you, all right? And that's where AI tools like Google Gemini or ChatGPT or Claude AI can come to the rescue. So what we're gonna do right now is we're actually going to add schema.org markup to one of my blog posts and we're gonna do it from start to finish so you can see every step that I take. We're gonna take this article and we're gonna throw it into an AI tool and I'm gonna use Google Gemini and I'm going to ask it what structure data, what schema.org markup could I easily add to this page? Once we ask it what schema.org markup it could add, if it didn't already, we're gonna actually ask it to create that schema markup. We're then gonna take that code and then paste it into our blog post, and then we're gonna validate it using the testing tools that we just looked at. All right, so without further ado, let's hop into my website platform. And I use Kajabi, so shameless plug for Kajabi. If you want a great website platform for blogs or selling digital products, I highly recommend Kajabi. I'll also include a link to that in the description below. All right, so when you're in Kajabi, there's this blog post section over here. And once you're in the blog post section, you simply have to find the blog post that you want to edit. And then it's this section right here, this content section. This is a very basic WYSIWYG, which is called a what you see is what you get. A lot of content management platforms like WordPress or Kajabi have something like this, where you don't necessarily have to know HTML code to be able to create a blog post. However, if you want to view the HTML code, you have the ability to do that. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I click this button right here, which allows me to look at the source code. I'm now going to take the code of this blog post, I'm going to copy it, and now I'm going to go into Google Gemini, which is Google's AI tool. I'm now going to enter the prompt, and I'm gonna say, what schema.org markup could I add to this blog post, okay? And then I'm going to paste in the code that we just grabbed. And now Google Gemini took a few seconds to think, and it says, absolutely, here's a breakdown of the schema.org markup that you could add to this blog post, focusing on the embedded video and the blog post itself. And so it looks like it is close to finishing, so it's recommending that I add this video object schema markup, and it's also recommending that I add, let's see here, this blog post schema markup. All right, so I just scrolled down and it looks like those are the two recommendations that it has for us. So I need to add the video object schema markup and I need to add the blog post schema markup. All right, so now that we know what schema.org markup we can add, we're gonna ask the AI to do it for us. But I wanna give you some context here with the prompt that we're about to add. Uh, most content management systems like Kajabi or WordPress, the areas of the blog post that you actually edit your post look very similar to this, right? Okay, so I can scroll down, you can see this, and as we shared earlier, you can actually look at the source code for it. But something that I wanna call out here, these types of content management systems, all of this stuff, all of this code, is going into your web page's body tag. There's different sections of your code. There's a head tag, there's a body tag, etc. okay? Sometimes when you ask AI tools to create schema.org markup or structure data like JSON LD, what they will do is they will put it in the head section. On this current page, we don't have access to that. So I give you that context because we are going to ask it to give us the code for the body tag, not the head section. And so my prompt reads like this. Can you provide the exact code that I just provided you with your schema.org markup included at the top? The code will be pasted in the body tag, not the head section, all right? So once we have that, we can hit enter and it will now run. 
Awesome, and it just finished running, and what's cool is it just gave us the code that we can paste in to that section, and for, for me, that's in Kajabi, that we'll be able to paste in to get this structure data up and running. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code that it gave, right? And you can see here's the, the contents, the original contents of my blog post, right? And so what we can do is we can now go into Kajabi and I can go into this source code section and now I'm just gonna paste in the code that it gave me at the top, all right? So I paste that in, but now we need to verify what it's saying. And so as I look at this code, that my next step is I'm gonna go line by line to see what things are inaccurate and what I'm going to need to update with accurate information. Now, this isn't rocket science, but so for example, I see this one right here, which is upload date for this video. And it says the date that I uploaded this was 2023. So that would be November 22nd, 2023. That is not accurate. I just uploaded this a couple of months ago in 2024. In my experience with these AI tools, the actual structured data format is correct, and most of the information that it provides it is correct, but there's just some random stuff like upload date, or maybe it found the wrong thumbnail URL that will need to be corrected. All right, so now I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna go line by line, and I'm just gonna verify that the information's correct, and if it's not, like that upload date, I'm going to correct it. All right, so I just fast forwarded it, but let me share with you the exact things that I had to update to get it right. All right, so I had to change the upload date to the accurate date, not just for this video schema up here, but also the blog post schema down here. I had to change the date published and the date modified to the accurate date. So that's super easy. The other thing that I had to update was here where it's asking for the web page URL. So I had to simply copy and paste the web page URL for that blog post. I pasted in the headline and then last but not least, uh, my business name is actually Scott Redgate LLC and so I had to paste that in here as well. And so as you can see, the hard part was already done. All this formatting for the structured data was already done and then I just needed to take a couple of minutes and then verify and update a couple of those fields to make sure that it was accurate information. Okay, so now that's in there. So we have the structured data here at the top and then we've got the exact blog post that we had at the bottom. So I'm gonna hit okay. And as I said before, look at this. It is the exact same blog post. You can't tell any different. All the changes that are happening were inside the code. So now I'm gonna hit save. And now we're going to go to this live URL. And again, you can see nothing has changed to the average person that's going to look at this page. Well, let's go in and see if the schema.org markup that we actually added is valid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those testing tools that I talked about earlier in the video. So the first thing that we're gonna use here is the schema markup validator, and I'll provide a link to that in the description below. So I'm gonna click this. And now all we have to do is paste in the URL of the blog post that we just added the schema to. And would you look at that? It is now successfully detecting the structured data that we added to the page. Now, let's get back to the why behind this. So we are giving search engines additional context about the different parts of the page and the different parts of the website overall. And now that we're doing that, if there's opportunities in the future where Google really wants to bring in things like logos into the search results, well, we're giving it to them on a silver platter for what our logo actually is. And so if and when that happens, we will now have a very great chance to have our website have those special features in the search results because we did a good job of tagging them in our HTML. So there's another validator that we're gonna use and this one's actually directly from Google. And so we're gonna to go to the rich results test and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paste in the URL and it's gonna test the live URL here. And another successful test. So it's able to pick up on two valid items detected. It shows the uh, details behind the crawl, the time that it did it. It's able to see the article in the video. And so it says that it is valid and it is detected. It does say here you have a non-critical issue detected. So if you wanna be extra cautious, extra safe, you can go in and see what that is. So let's actually go in and do that here. 
Okay, so here for the author tag, it's saying we are missing a URL, which is awesome because I actually have an about me page on my website. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an about me URL in this section, and I'll actually go in and ask Google Gemini to do it for me. And then I'll go back in and paste it into the page. All right, so the prompt that I'm going to give it is this. The Rich Snippets testing tool we use said that I'm missing the author URL. Can you please add that into the code? And then I'm going to give it the URL. And so we're going to hit update. And then it says, you're absolutely right. I apologize. I love how AI tools always do that. Okay, so now it's creating it. And let's see if we can just simply grab that URL. Let's see, where is it at? Okay, perfect. So it's going to be just this line right here. And now I'm gonna go back into Kajabi and I'm gonna go into the source code. All right, and let's see, where did it have that positioned here? Underneath name, Scott Redgate. So I'm simply gonna paste that in. All right, so now that's in there and now I'm gonna hit save. Now let's go back to the Rich Snippets testing tool and I'm going to refresh this one and let's see if it worked. All right, and it is done, it is complete, we did it. So we've got two valid items detected and there's no errors to be seen. So well done, how awesome is that? All right, so let's review the steps here, okay? So we found a random blog post on my website. We copied that blog post and then we went into an AI tool, we used Google Gemini, and we asked it to tell us what schema markup we should add, and we asked it to create it for us. So, Google Gemini gave us the code, the schema markup, we then went back into our website and we pasted it in and made sure to update the fields with the relevant appropriate information. And so once it did that, we saved the blog post. We then went into the testing tools. So we used the schema testing tool and we used the Google rich snippet testing tool to then tell us if all the code was accurate. In most instances, it will be and you will be good. For us, we had one small thing that we had to add and that was an author URL. And friends, here's the good news you're not gonna have to use this AI tool for each and every one of your blog posts. Once the AI tool gives you that code and the code that you've now validated and it's testing, you can simply go in and update the fields with the new information for those new blog posts. So for example, you can take all of this structured data that it gave you and you could save it to your computer. And then whenever you create a new blog post, you can just go in and update with the new information. So you can keep all the code the same, but just update it with the new information for that new blog post. And so I know it took us a few minutes to get here and it took us a little trial and error, but now that we have the code, you can now use that on all your blog posts, assuming they're all a similar format. And friends, once you do this, in a couple of weeks, once Google has recrawled your website, you'll start to see this section inside of Google Search Console, which is labeled Enhancements. You'll start to see some of those elements for those pages appear in this section of Google Search Console. Uh, well, friend, how about that? We just use AI tools to create structured data for our website and we validated it to make sure that it was working properly. It was, and now we can save that code and I can use that on all of my blog posts going forward and I can just update with new, the new information. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching my video. Until next time.